secrets that uh, we had stopped at number 37. Now we are moving on to number 38. Question 38 is asking that uh, which of the following bacteria is associated with peptic ulcer disease? Spider-Man, the fake Spider-Man saying that uh, Helicobacter pylori is associated with peptic ulcer disease. I think we've discussed H. pylori before and uh, everything about its management, triple K, all that, even the characteristics. So uh, we won't dwell much. Perhaps the one pathogen in the choices that we haven't discussed is Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter jejuni. So something on Campylobacter jejuni. What is it? Is it a gram positive? Is it a gram negative? Does it affect the GI? Does it cause food poisoning? Something like that. Or, or, or. Campylobacter jejun. Anyone with information on Campylobacter Ah, uh, Spider-Man is saying uh, it's a gram negative organism. Mm -hmm. Uh, non spore form, and it has a spiral or spiral shaped roots. Ah, uh, spiral shaped. Causes uh, food borne illnesses. I think you had mentioned uh, in the examples of organisms causing food poisoning. Ah, yeah, yeah, we had mentioned it's uh, one of the causes of food poisoning. Right, uh, the, yeah, it's actually that diarrhea, abdominal pain, cramping. And also it's the, something perhaps I have to add is the, it will also cause uh, the guillain Barr syndrome. That is associated. So, if you see food poisoning associated with Guillain Barr syndrome, you have your Campylobacter jejuni as the uh, enemy. Uh, anything else? Am I removed? Uh, diagnosis, yeah, we have the stool test. That's how you diagnose. Nice. And, uh, okay. uh -huh. Transmitted through the ingestion of food and water that's contaminated with the bacteria. And then it doesn't have any specific uh, treatment. It's self-limiting. So it will, no specific treatment will be given. Unless it's severe, yes. So what if uh, what if it has not caused food poisoning and uh, it's causing a gastrointestinal infection, the campyl campylobacteriosis? What what will be the treatment then? Okay, guys, uh, mm -hmm. Google says, mm -hmm. um, so it's only treated in most severe cases, right? And when it mm -hmm. causes gastro, gastrointestinal uh, diseases, and it says it's one of the most common causes of gastroenteritis, 
-hmm. Treatment include macrolides such as erythromycin, mm -hmm. um, fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxacin, tetracycline such as doxycycline. Yeah, and alternative are azithromycin. Yeah, those ones. So tetracycline, fluoroquinolones, and macrolides. macrolides. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, so the macrolides, the fluoroquinolones, and uh, tetracyclines are also uh, an alternative. Spider-Man is saying uh, macrolides for the jejuni species. Okay. Good. Can we move? Can we move? So next question reads, uh, what's the causative agent of color as a positive agent of color as a uh, Leishmania Donovani? We've discussed this in depth. We've discussed the, the, the insects or organisms associated with their spread. So we won't go into much details. So causative agent for color as a is a Leishmania Donovani. Then the next question asks, what is the vector for Uchireria bancrofti? What is the vector for Uchireria bancrofti? Mosquitoes. As a spider man has said uh, the, the the vector is um the mosquitoes, right? Tell us so, uh, snails act as vectors for what? Rats act as vectors for what? Just real quick, real quick, just the choices there. The snail is for schistosomias, and the sessifly is uh, the trypanosoma. Uh, the rat is plague. Thank you. Uh, nice, nice. Number 41. So the following diseases is caused by a bacteria. Oh, this question is for leprosy. As you know, we will say for number 41, it's a leprosy. Which was the uh, the treatment for leprosy? Pardon? What's the treatment for leprosy? 
Uh, you give the same antimicrobacterial. Uh, I know rifampicin is okay. rare. There's also Dapson. Yeah. 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 Dapson and. Yeah. Those ones. Aclofazimin, yeah. So rifampicin, dapson, clofazin, yeah. And they're usually given for one year. So the next question read that which of the following bacteria contributes to the normal flora of the intestine of man which bacteria contributes to the normal flora of the intestines the gi normal flora fake spiderman is saying that uh, it's e coli e coli is a normal flora of the git What of uh, the other, the hemophilus influenza, is it a normal flora for anywhere? Uh, nomoflora of the nasopharynx, yeah. Nomophila's influenza is a nomoflora of the nasopharynx, yeah. Uh, uh. On, on to the next, unless someone has something to add on this one. In organisms cause urinary tract infection, except all cause UTIs, except UTIs, UTIs. So, which one is not a causative agent of UTI? Atieno is saying a uh, bacterioidis fragilis does not cause UTI. 
is of a different opinion about Philip Zeller. Uh -huh. So I think, yeah, everyone is saying, yeah, see, I think, uh, yeah, bacterioid is fragilis. Yeah, even the fake Spider-Man agrees. So for number 43, we are having C. Bacterioid is fragilis does not cause UTI is caused by E. coli, the most common proteus mirabilis and Klebs cell. Have we looked at treatment of UTIs in a, I think that should be quick. People working in community pharmacies, treatment of, of UTIs, what do you give? I think mostly it's a ciprofloxacin or ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. Not sure. Ah, yeah, ciprofloxacin. Yeah. Nitrofurantoin, Nitrofurantoin is used for the recurrent mm -hmm. infections. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Nitrofurantoin is used for recurrent infection of UTIs when the infections are recurrent. Uh, yeah, but it can also be used just for the acute infection. Uh, KNH recently released some guidelines on the same. So nitrofurantoin or the fluoroquinolones. What if our patient is pregnant? What do you give? What's what's safe in pregnancy? Yeah, cotrimoxazole is an option, not in pregnancy, but uh, yeah, not, but cotrimoxazole also used for treatment of UTI. Yes. I think nitro, nitrofurantoin is um, effective in pregnancy. Yeah. yeah, nitrofurantoin until the last month of pregnancy. Nitro is not safe. It can cause hemolytic anemia in the newborn. So what do you give then? Cephalexin. Ah, yeah, nice, nice. Dr. Waweru, the cephalosporin, such as cephalexin, even augmenting 625, yeah, can be given for UTI. So that stage when no, no other agent is safe. Uh, anyone with something to add on you? The most common symptoms, what do patients commonly complain of? Chai, when you had a UTI, what did you, how did you feel? It's a frequent urination, pain during urination. Ah, Burn nice. Burning <laughs> sensation. While peeing. Yeah, burning sensation while peeing. There's also maybe production of pus. Mm -hmm. Pain with the fever. Sorry? Fever, a ten. Fever. Fever for, uh, uh, that is, isn't fever for the upper UTI, the pyelonephritis? Mm, in the time you may send. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, you don't do one, oh, let me. I'm not to expose it. Ah. <laughs> ah, so we look at symptoms. Uh, so someone has also sent something to the group that really summarizes treatment of UTI, also the positive pathogens. Uh, yeah. So we are good. Moving on to number 44. The question being that, what are the four most abundant elements in living organisms? What are the four most abundant elements in living organisms? Fake Spider-Man says C, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. Black. 
idea that C is the answer. Yeah, I think C is the answer. Clown Stanley also supporting. Yeah, nice. I think there we're all in agreement. C, number 45. Which statement about enzymes is false? Which statement about enzymes is false? Choose A, cellular catalysts are generally proteins. So enzymes are generally proteins. Enzymes catalyze non-specific reactions. Enzymes are required in large numbers in a cell. Or enzymes enable a it's at particular time. So he's asking which statement about enzymes is false. In uh, Awero is thinking that uh, enzymes are required in large numbers in a cell. That that statement is false. Number 45, anyone else with a different opinion? Uh, what about the one for uh, non catalyzed non-specific reactions? Because I thought enzymes are very specific for the kind of reactions they catalyze. Uh, yeah, yeah. Specific reactions, right? So, so we have in between B and C. Enzyme catalyze non-specific reactions or enzymes are required in let's choose the best answer. What is the best answer now? Uh, I'd go with C because you see you just need a bit of enzymes to catalyze a reaction. You don't need so many. Because that reaction was going to take place anyway. Shafi is uh, disagreeing and saying B is the best answer. Also, Frank is saying B is the better answer. Fake Spider Man was also thinking that B is the best answer. I think you can go with B, but also appreciate that uh, enzymes are not required in large numbers in cells. Yeah, but we've chosen B as the best answer because enzymes are very specific. It doesn't catalyze non-specific reactions. But uh, if someone else finds something, perhaps that can... Wow. Maybe this, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask that, okay, I've, uh, I've Googled, but they say that enzymes are required in minute numbers and mm -hmm. enzymes are specific in their actions. Does that mean they are, in, okay, is that the same as B, like they're specific in their actions? Mm. But in a summer, the enzymes are required in minute number. And they're specific in their action. Uh, so they are specific in their action. Is that the same as the catalyze? Ah, uh, is that is that the same as saying that enzymes catalyze specific reactions? What were USIU? What were Kizungu? Uh, do they mean the same thing? Highly specific in their action and catalyze specific reactions. So action and reactions. I think uh... No comment from uh, USIU, meaning Pia Yokizungu in Mawalemea.
I think it means the same. Uh, okay. So br uh, briefly, Srina or anyone else, have we looked at, uh, have we quickly done an overview of enzymes, perhaps in a previous discussion? Enzymology, especially the inhibitions, competitive, non-competitive, all those things. Does anyone mind giving a summary of enzymology? Uh, one minute summary. Okay, so for enzymology, the types of inhibition, there is a competitive inhibition where uh, the enzyme binds in place of the substrate and uh, the KM for this type of inhibition is increased while Vmax is the same. And then non-competitive inhibition where... Uh, the inhibitor binds to another site, so that's an allosteric site. And over here, the Vmax decreases and Km stays the same. And then there is uncompetitive inhibitor where uh, the inhibitor now binds to the enzyme sub substrate complex. And over here, Km and Vmax, both of them, they decrease. And uh, the last one is irreversible inhibitor inhibition where uh, the, the inhibitor binds to the substrate like I think covalently over here Vmax decreases and Km stays the same so irreversible and non-competitive are they do similar action where Vmax decreases and Km stays the same then the other ones that I can remember is like the suicide inhibitors but I'm not sure how exactly they work yeah uh, thank you so much Hiral. thank you so much so suicide inhibitors some something on suicide inhibition Suicide inhibition, anyone, anyone? Suicide inhibition, how does that, how does it occur? Not sure, but I think suicide inhibitors and uh, irreversible inhibition is almost the same thing. So they just, irreversibly the irreversibly i don't know irreversibly covalently binds to the substrate and then no you can't just undo the whatever your yeah it's irreversible basically the suicide inhibitors are irreversible ah okay great great so it's irreversible yeah yeah, yeah they're irreversible and then also like you said enzymes they are proteins and uh, they they enhance the rate of reactions by lowering the activation energies, and then their action is either it can be lock and key where they have a specific substrate that binds to it, or it can be induced fit where an a substrate binds then induces a conformational change. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Iral, did you have anything to add? Yeah, just to add on for that irreversible inhibition. 
So mm-hmm. I said there is so there are three categories for irreversible inhibition. The first one that I said was suicide inhibitors, mm-hmm. which now it's like they trick the enzyme, so they activate that. Um, the inhibitor activates the. Um, okay, wait. It tricks the enzyme into activating the inhibitor, which forms like a covalent bond with the enzyme then the second one is group specific where the inhibitor reacts with a specific group on the active side which are usually amino acids and Mm -hmm. they substrate analogs which the inhibitor looks like the substrate but it actually forms a covalent bond with the active side yeah those are the three categories for irreversible inhibition Ah, uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. So we can, uh, I think we can move to the next question unless someone has something else to add on enzymology. I believe, yeah, that we ex- exhaust it. So the three D structure of biomolecules like proteins, polysaccharides, and membrane lipids are held together by the 3D structure of biomolecules are held together by what type of bonds? Spider-Man Fick is saying hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, hydrophobic bonds, and Van der Waal interactions. Are we, are we in agreement, Hapo? Yes. So for number 46, uh, choice A, put it on choice A. I love some bias. Uh-huh. Something regarding 46, like when we were discussing on earlier sessions, you said there are three types of wonder world forces. The dipole, dipole, it occurs, it's an interaction between things, the ion dipole, it's between an ion and a polar molecule, an induced dipole attraction that's also called as dispersion. It's between non-polar molecules. Ah, uh, nice. And the third one? Actually, the third one. The first one is dipole dipole. The second one, ion mm-hmm. dipole. The third one, induced. Ah, ah. ah thank you, thank you. Induced one is also called as dispersion. Ah, Santi, Santi, Santi. So the types of Van der Waal, you've had it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Dipole, dipole. Induced ion, dipole. dipole. And, and the ion. Dipole. Dipole, yeah. yeah. Just as a question, is are hydrogen bonds part of Van der Waal or are they are a standalone? I think they're standard, but the interaction between hydrogen is the same as that of dipole dipole interaction. It's the same. And then it highly attracts the polar molecules. Ah, perfect. Yes, yeah, so can move to number. 
Trina, you can uh, scroll it uh, to scroll. So the question is asking which of the following amino acids have an aromatic R group. So even perhaps even without seeing the choices, what are the three amino acids which are aromatic? What are the three aromatic amino acids? Phenyl alanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Phenyl alanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Great. See here. Yes, by the man fake is also a green. Also, and then what are the other different classes of amino acids? And what are examples of the? I don't remember if it was Liz who gave us a very nice mnemonic on the essential amino acids. I think it was private hall. I'm not sure. So, amino acids, we have aspartate, and we also have glutamate, and uh, negatively charged amino acids. Mm -hmm. What other amino acids are there? Looked at aromatic next. For positively charged, we have lysine, alginine, and histidine. Ah, nice. Ah. Charge, lysine, alginine, and histidine. Mm -hmm. Then for the polar, we have serine, 309. Cysteine, asparagine, mm -hmm. and glutamine. Asparagine. Let me just write it on the chat box. Let's take the record. What about 309 and Apollo? Yes, 309 is under Apollo. Yes. Uh, Polar and charged, yes. Polar and charged. Yeah. And then there's non polar lymphatic ones like glycine, alanine. Proline, valine, leucine, isoleucine, and methionine. Polar. That's non-polar. Lysine, alanine, leucine, isoleucine. I'm just writing on the chat box. Valine, proline, methionine. Well, what's the last one you're saying? Methionine. Oh, methionine. Oh. There is a nice, there is a nice um diagram in Dr. Martin's slide. Ah, you can just forward the same to us. Then if someone also remembers the mnemonic for the essential amino acids, the mnemonic had been shared, you can just reshare it here. Yeah, because the uh, alloys will be moving on. You just reshare it on the chat box. I'm going it for the essential amino acids. So for the next question, ah, for number 47, we've already said the answer is D, Shrina, and uh, so we can move to 48. So for number 48, the question is asking, the following polysaccharides are physic physiologically important carbohydrates, except the following polysaccharides are physiologically important carbs, except which one is not a physiologically important carbohydrate? The fake Spider-Man is saying uh, inulin is not an important Carbohydrate. <clears throat> Anyone of a different opinion or view? No, it's inulin. It's inulin, not, not insulin, Mombi. It's inulin.
So perhaps Spider-Man, you can just write on the chat box, maybe YB, Y in your link. Or anyone can uh, can uh, can help Spider-Man with that. Why is inulin not physiologically important? I think it's found in soy. Uh, inulin is found in plants. Uh, perhaps the also the other thing I think is that inulin is not cannot be absorbed from the stomach so or from the GIT. So I think also that makes it uh, physiologically a non-important. Just my thoughts, but I agree with uh, Spider-Man that uh, Inulin is the answer there. Yeah, non-digestible carbohydrate, yeah. So, moving on to Number 49, unless someone uh, wants us to say something about uh, anything, any of the ones there. Moving on to number 49. Under which class of bingo lipids fall? Under which class of lipids does the sphingo phospholipids fall? Spider is saying uh, it falls under the complex lipids, right? And uh, Samia is also backing that answer that the sphingos phospholipids are classified as the complex lipids. I think there was a time we we discussed lipids. Does someone want us to go through lipids again? I'm a uh, lipids to cause sour. Black Panther is requesting that uh, we go through lipids just as a summary. So, who can offer a nice summary to lipids? A simple, short summary to lipids. Anyone, anyone? You kindly unmute and offer what you, you have. We have 10 days to go to the exam. I'm sure you know something about lipids. Uh, we, we, we've been muted. It's only three people that have been talking so far.
lipids, biochemistry. Okay, so lipids, um, they can be classified into saturated and unsaturated. Then you also have um, the monosaturated and the, sorry, the polyunsaturated and the monounsaturated uh, fatty acids. Then you also have like another classification like uh, triglycerides where there's the glycerol black backbone with three fatty acids attached to the glycerol. Then you also have um, uh, waxes, which are saturated fatty acids. And uh, that includes uh, beeswax. Biz and I think, yeah, that's what, what I remember. Then you also have the glycerophospholipids, which is now which now has the glycerol um, backbone with two fatty acids, and on the third third carbon of the glycerol is a there's a phosphoric acid or amino alcohol. Then there is a lysophospholipids that have a glycerol um, the as the backbone. Uh, one fatty acid, an alcohol, and uh, the phosphoric acid amino alcohol. Then you also have now the sphingo, sphingolipids. Yeah, then um, these sphingolipids, they're usually um, surface antigens and uh, like they're present in your, in your like the, how you determine your blood uh, blood group then you even have the arachidonic acid derivatives such as um, uh, prostaglandins thromboxane and uh, leukotrienes then now the steroidal ones would be cholesterol yeah i think and then the lipoprotein lipoproteins which are now all this LDL and VLDL, HL, HDL, and the uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Hiral, for the excellent summary on lipids. So we say the sphingophospholipids are classified as a complex lipids. Yeah. So the next question asks: the following two enzymes are used to phosphorylate glucose to glucose six phosphate. The two enzymes that are used to phosphorylate glucose to glucose six phosphate. Yeah, Spider-Man is saying that it's the hexokinase and the glucokinase. Yeah, we've, we've looked at glycolysis before in detail. We don't need to repeat uh, that. Just a question. <clears throat> between, mm -hmm. between hexokinase and glucokinase, which one has a higher KM? I think glucokinase has a higher KM. It has a lower affinity, but I'm not sure. Maybe someone can confirm. Okay, so when when an enzyme has a higher KM, that means that they need a higher higher concentration of their substrate, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because a higher KM means a, a lower affinity. Okay, thanks. So kinase yeah, okay. has lower KM than glucokinase. Okay. Ah, uh, nice, nice, nice. So hexokinase has a lower KM than glucokinase. Or in other words, hexokinase has more affinity to glucose than glucokinase. Okay. KM and affinity are in, in uh, what is that word called? Indirectly. Inversely proportional. Inversely proportional, mm. yeah, see. Spider-Man, the fake Spider-Man is saying that chat GPT says the opposite. Uh, 
Yeah, but uh, all all other references are saying that uh, hexokinase has more affinity than glucokinase. Perhaps you can send a screenshot of what chat GPT is saying to the group. Meanwhile, we can go on. Number 51. Uh, Shrina, you can scroll down. Uh, so number 51, the question asks, in which type of porphyria does darkening of the urine occur upon standing and the patients do not have abnormal sensitivity to light? In which type of porphyria does the darkening of urine occur upon standing and the patients do not have an abnormal sensitivity to light? Uh, we're waiting for answers. We're waiting for answers. Number 51. In which type of porphyria does... Uh, yeah, Atieno is saying that uh, in acute intermittent porphyria, we do not have sensitivity to light, and there will be the darkening of urine upon standing. Anyone else with a different opinion? Yeah, according to chat GPT, it also stays intermediate. Uh, uh, so we have acute intermittent porphyria. Does uh, do we have someone who wants to give a summary on the porphyrias? Anyone, anyone who's willing to give a summary on the different types? Okay. Superior, uh, it says here, it's a group of rare genetic okay. disorders that affects the nervous system, the skin, often with acute attacks that can be triggered by various factors, including certain medications, alcohol, hormones, and stress. So it's caused by abnormalities in the production of heat, a component of the nerve ligament is essential for carrying uh, oxygen in the bloodstream. So the types of Ophelia, each caused by mutation, and then the types are acute, the I AIP, the acute one, it says that um, it's characterized by acute attacks that can cause severe abdominal pain, vomiting, constipation, paralysis, hallucinations, and then there's hereditary one, Ophelia, HCP. 
Hence, it shares similarity with the acute one, but can cause similar symptoms during acute, uh, acute oh, attacks. And then there is uh, Vajeta. Actually, the ones that I was mentioning right now, the acute and the hereditary and the Vajeta, Vajigeta, actually, Vajigeta, those ones are the acute superiors. And then there's cutaneous one. <laughs> cutaneous is the cochlear, cutanea, tada, and then there is erythropoietic, protopopyria, congenital erythropoietic, protopopyria. So basically, it just affects the him, and then um, it leads to less likely of uh, oxygen to reaching other organs. As we know, the hemoglobin is the carrying, uh, it's essential for carrying oxygen into the bloodstream. So it leads to those um, uh, disorders. This is according to Google, so I, I don't have reliable information. Uh, I've shared a link on the theme. You guys can just have a look at it. You've shared uh, it on the chat. No, no, uh, I've shared it on WhatsApp. Uh, okay. I will go to the next question. Uh, Shrina, there's a request that you highlight the answers, but I'm assuming because the circle answers are correct, you are you're not highlighting those ones. I don't know. That's my assumption. Yeah, I'll highlight them. There's also an addition that barbiturates are contraindicated in patients with porphyrias because the drugs induce synthesis of porphyrins. So barbiturates are contraindicated in patients with porphyrias because the drug will induce the synthesis of porphyrins. And we've seen that these patients, they have a deficiency of an, one enzyme or the other, they cannot effectively synthesize. So, function of insulin, yeah, so that one has already been highlighted to decrease blood sugar. Ascorbic acid acts as a what? Vitamin C. What does vitamin C act? Is it a reducing it? Is it both? Or is it, or is it a hydrolyzing agent? Vitamin C, ascorbic acid. We have it. Someone saying it's a reducing agent. It's, a, it's an antioxidant. So if it's an antioxidant, I think yeah, you're supporting that it's a reducing agent. Yeah, it's a reducing agent. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, is saying that it has the ability to donate electrons and reduces other substances in chemical reaction. Hence, the answer is it is a reducing agent because it has that ability to donate electrons to the other substances. Hence, reducing. Remember, once a substance gains more electrons, we call that reduction. If it loses electrons, we call it oxidation. So it's a reducing. 
agents. It's also antioxidant because it, it helps the protect cells from oxidative stress since it takes up the free radicals. Uh, right. It's also so an antioxidant. An antioxidant. It's not an oxidizing agent, it's an antioxidant. Nice. So 53A. And is it a water soluble or a fat soluble heater? It's water soluble. Ah, uh, water soluble. Uh, we'll go to number 54. Let's scroll down. Yeah, uh, Spider-Man is offering a very good mnemonic that fat soluble, you say a deck, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. A deck, A, D, E, and K. I'm moving on to the next question. That's uh, the following are, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the following are basic cell types of plants, except which ones? The following are basic cell types of plants, except which ones? We have the parenchyma, we have cholenchyma, we have sclerenchyma, and we have calcium oxalates. Calcium oxalates. Calcium oxalate. If someone can tell us those cell types listed there, how do they function? What is their role in plants? What's the role of parenchyma? What's the role of cholenchyma? What's the role of sclerenchyma? The role of parenchyma cells is to for storage of uh, starch, protein, fats, and oils. And the role of cholenchyma is supportive role, uh, provide supporting structure, um, give uh, flexibility that allow the plant to bend without breaking and sclerenchyma is provide uh, transport of water and nutrients um, transport of water through the xylem and transport of sugars through the phloem ah uh, nice 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 thank you so much thank you so much Fatima can move to the next question asking uh, which one of the following does not the following does not qualify as a crude drug does not qualify as a crude drug is it the senna leaf is it kaolin strachanin or tragacan which one is not crude drug We have uh, someone is thinking that uh, strychnine is not a crude drug. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that. I think it's an alkaloid. But okay, so I ask, uh, what are crude drugs? <laughs> The unnatural substances derived from plants, animals, and microorganisms that are used in their unrefined raw form for medical, therapeutic, cosmetic purposes. They're used in their raw form or unrefined form, the natural substance which are used in the raw or unrefined form for medical, therapeutics, or cosmetic purposes. Uh, okay. So yeah, the raw form of drugs. Uh, 
and purified, right? The, 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 the drug with all of these others. Strachinin is not a crude drug. Black Panther said I, that uh, she can... can It's even toxic. It's some toxic alkaloid. If I remember well when you were discussing alkaloids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that has been used as a poison. So number 40, number 55C. Moving on to number 56. Question asks the following are characteristics of leaf, leaf margins or leaf. Leaf margins, really. Leaf margins, except. So, which one is not a characteristic of a leaf margin? Is it serrated, entire, ciliate, or deficit? Well, everyone has said deficit is not a characteristic of a leaf. Margin. We have the serrated leaf margins, the entire leaf margin, uh, the silly leaf margin, but uh, decorate according to of an arrangement and not a margin, and not a margin arrangement of the leaves, not a margin. Rami is asking, what does the term mean? I think uh, Spider-Man has answered a question by saying, the leaf arrangement, uh, it's an arrangement of leaf, right? It describes the arrangement of leaves in a in a certain manner. Just send a picture to the group. That. Moving on to the next question. Ah, the Panther has already sent to me. Nice. Moving on to the next question. So the following plants give rise to a fiber. Which one of the following plants give rise to a fiber? Is it the gossypium? Is it the castanospermum? The lobelia or the satinus? Which one gives rise to a fiber? Everyone is shouting A, A, A. Cotton, you know, the gossipia, we get it's a cotton plant, right? We get this is the scientific name, and cotton is a fiber. So we could talk about the fibers. Okay. So I'm going to show you the fiber. Are you asking the rest? I've never heard of them personally unless I Google each other. Mm -hmm. 
Someone said the lobalia is tobacco. Lobalia inflata is tobacco. And then the sec the B one, the castano spanum, it's commonly known as black bean tree. And the other one, sitting as the other one, it's a flowering plant that belongs to the family Cystinaceae. It's a parasitic plant that lacks chlorophyll and depends on the roots of other plants for nutrients. B has antiretroviral activity. Okay, thank you. So which one is the which which one is the cell that you mentioned? Uh which one is chestnut? What is the second one? Okay. According to Google that one, it's saying the 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 second one it's saying um what do we call the black bean tree. So maybe it's a, it's a lie or so we'll go with yours. Then the last one, it's a flowering uh, it's a flowering plant that belong to Cisnaceae. It's a parasitic plant that lacks chlorophyll and depends on the root of other plants for nutrients. I don't see an example of anything. So yeah, we move on. Dr. Sam said Hiral mentioned lobby lie is an Indian tobacco, not the normal one, and is uh, used for respiratory conditions. It was used for respiratory conditions.
Okay, I can take us through as we wait for Dr. Guys. Uh, the next question is which one of the, the following is a structural classification of glycoside except cyogenetic glycoside, steroidal alkaloidal glycoside, cardiac glycoside, and steroidal glycoside? So what do you guys think? Um, it's just me, it's just a, a confusion because there's nothing like a steroidal alkaloidal glycosides though there's a classification of um both both a classification of um glycosides from cyanogenic uh, cyano, cyanogenetic cerebral cardiac and cerebral yeah. oh, okay thank you um had we covered glycosides before had we discussed glycosides before yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yes we, 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 we did okay then we can go on. What's the percentage ionization of amobarbital PKA eight and at a pH of seven point four? So the mathematicians can help us with that. Spiderman said B. I, I feel like differing with number 58 because they're asking the structural classification, not the pharmacological classification. Because looking at the structural classifications, then cardiac glycoside would be under pharmacological because cardiac glycoside is also steroid on glycoside. But in the classification of glycosides, we have steroid alkyl alkaloid glycoside. So I would differ. I don't know what about others, but I would go with this. Thing. Aye. Okay, does the steroidal alkaloidal glycoside classification, is it there? Yes, it's there. It is. Okay. So back to question 58. Uh, so you said uh, cardiac glycosides are under steroidal glycosides? Yes, ca cardiac glycoside is under steroidal glycosides. But now the cardiac uh, classification is under pharmacological, not structural. Okay. Then uh, anyone else? Someone else has a, an opinion on that. Okay, um, I think it's Dr. Karimi. So for the steroidal alkaloidal glycosides that some of us haven't had, what are like some of the examples under that? Because that's why we eliminated it. An example is solanum. Okay. It makes sense. So uh, we proceed with C. Is that okay with everyone? And uh, Stanley has sent a classification to the group. You can kindly check on that. Uh, 59, what's the percentage ionization of amobarbital? Think Spider Man has done the calculation in the chat box.
So he calculated and got 25%. Uh, I'm not really good in this calculation stuff. Please, if someone uh, has a way to make us understand, please unmute. And enlighten us. Okay, I am. Um, someone is showing us on the paper. Is someone take us through that calculation? So that we can go on. We only have uh, about 30, 30 minutes. Even if you could like do it in a paper and send to the group or in the chat box, that will be okay.
so someone saying oh, if I'm I'm a, I'm a puppy toad is a uh, base. It gives eighty percent, and if it's an acid, it's twenty percent. So those who are good in these calculations, please uh, explain this to us so that we can move on to the next question. Uh, so should we move on and put a standard question on it? Patel had sent she got 22%. I think she considered it as a, as a piece. Okay, moving to the next question, we'll come back to that question as you guys analyze it. Uh, all the following are acidic. Acidic organic functional groups except. Mm, so, organic chemistry. Please, guys, unmute and tell or like text in the chat so that we can move. For sixty, someone is saying C. Any explanation? Okay. 
next question, uh, which one of the following salt forms has the highest water solubility? Hydroxyl, hydroxyl palmoate, penicillin G procaine, and penicillin G sodium. So, highest water solubility. Should we also skip that? Emma? Okay, uh, next question. Which of the following drug exhibits geometric, uh, geometric isomerism? Chlorom, chloromphenicol, ephedrine, acetylcholine, and try pro leading. I can't even see that option. As Sami has said, and sixty two D. Try pro try pro leading. The others has written. I think optical, optical structural system. So, um, yeah. Please give. Um, let's discuss so that we can finish. Um, I think for 61, um, hydroxys in HCl should be the one with the highest water solubility. That's what I think. Um, because I think um, any molecule that has um, HCl um H oh, what is it hcl dissociates in water because um it's it's highly it's very polar it's a very polar molecule um so when the component when h h the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion which hydrogen of course uh, slightly positive and chloride is slightly negative yeah it will combine from the hydronium ions in water we know hcl is a highly polar molecule so i think I think A should be the one with the highest water solubility, but I was open to um, hear if anybody thinks otherwise. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, for 62, we said uh, D. If, um, I don't know if someone has an explanation for that. Maybe Sonia, do you have um, for 62? Can you enlighten us? For 60, the one for geometric isomerism? Yes. That one, honestly, unless I, I search, I, 
who gave the answer in the chat. Maybe they, they had searched, but let me just let me just search and see because I don't have the answer off the top of my head. Okay, please do. Uh -huh. As you wait for Dr. Sonia on 62, we can just answer 62D and then we can wait for her to explain. We can continue with number 63. Dissolution of a... Okay, back to that question. Someone has texted. Uh, according to its structure and placement of the double bond seems more likely to exhibit geometric uh, isomerism. Okay. Uh, so for 63, the solution of a drug particle is controlled by all of the following except. Please uh, scroll. Okay. This particle size, uh, crystal habit, chemical form, and isomeris isomerism. So uh, particle size, yes, crystal chemical. I don't think isomerism will have any effect on the solution. And yeah, everyone on the chat box, I think is also agreeing that all the following statements are true reg regarding partition coefficient of a drug molecule, except it gives an indication of in vivo absorption. It's a measure of drug lipophilicity. It's an indication of the ability to cross cell membrane, and it's the ratio of uh, non-ionized distribution because between organic and aqueous is in in equilibrium. Sixty four people are saying C. So the other ones are uh, um, addition coefficient is an indication of the in vivo absorption, it measures the drug lipophilicity and it's the ratio uh, between non ionized drug to an organic and aqueous space in equilibrium. Okay, since you all agree, we can. Please uh, scroll the next question. 
Uh, I think uh, Srina is saying we can stop there to continue from tomorrow. What time is the morning discussion tomorrow? Uh, that's how I've interpreted those lines. Ah, uh, yes, okay. What time is the morning discussion tomorrow? 10 a.m.